Hey you guys, happy new year. It's 2019 and I'm so excited to do this video because that means more training classes are coming through, more CJOs are getting sent out. It is lit, like for lack of a better word. <laughs> But I am so excited for you guys. A lot of you guys are coming on the line. And um, of course you need to know about your coin. Like you wanna know how it pays, you need a breakdown. And this video is so near and dear to my heart because I feel like this was such a lacked, talked about subject. And you really need to understand how you're getting paid. So, this is going to, I'm going to switch between being generic but also being specific to mainline American Airlines and from what I can remember from regional so that everyone can have a realistic expectation and I will be giving you the magic number of what American Airline mainline flight attendants start out with. So, let's get started. Time out. I need to tell you guys about this amazing offer. I know you guys hate ads and everything, but this is so worth it. It is called a Fly Girl Box, and if you follow me on Instagram, you have seen what I'm talking about. A Fly Girl Box is for all my fly girls, my flight attendants out there, and it includes all the flight attendant essentials, and it's like a surprise. I know you guys have seen those makeup boxes that send you samples and everything of little makeups. It's like that but for flight attendants, it's the best idea since sliced bread. I'm not playing with y'all cause I love me some little trinkets and everything, okay? I love it, I love it, I'm addicted. So this is what you guys need to do in order to get the discount. Okay, so what you do is click on the link that I have down below and it's gonna take you to the Fly Girl page. So right now you have 15 days left to order for February's box and you already know I got mine. From here, I'm gonna go ahead and click this link, super easy, and you can choose. You can either just try it out once, get your monthly box, get three months, six months, 12 months, or even buy it for a friend or do both of these because that's lit. <laughs> and you're gonna go ahead here and you're gonna complete your subscription after that, you're gonna fill out all your information and go right over here to the discount code and you're gonna enter in traveling with T. From there, it's gonna go ahead and give you your discount and you'll be set with your Fly Girl box. From there, once you order your Fly Girl box, you will get it the first week of the month. Send me tons of pictures. I'm gonna get mine. I'm gonna be posting tons of pictures. I'm excited and even more exciting is I will be featured on the newsletter that's included with the box. So definitely make sure you get your box so you can see what I write about. All right guys, don't let me down. Order your box, 15 days. You saw it, 15 days, don't slack. Make sure you get your box. Limited quantities people, get your box. <laughs> okay, here we go guys. So as a mainline flight attendant, you're going to start out with 30.35. That's a great number to start out with because with regional, with Envoy, I started out with 18. So you can always subtract about a good $10 from what mainline gets from any carrier to figure out what a regional starts at. And it's so sad that it's like that, but you know, it is what it is, honestly. Your first year, you're gonna start out with 30, 35, and you definitely need to make it count. Don't go out splurging or anything. Once you reach your 13th year, which is where you max out for mainline, you get paid $68.25. Y'all, I had to put the big forehead in the camera because listen, I'm trying to be at my 13th year like yesterday, okay? Getting paid that per flight hour, are you insane? Can you just imagine how, if you fly a lot, like if you're a high time flyer, could you just imagine what your checks would look like? Like even if you're a low time flyer, like you could literally work the bare minimum and you could be good, like it's crazy. But yes, 
those are the main flight hour pay numbers. So that means with those numbers, you, that's how much you get paid for every flight hour. So from door close um, to door open, that's how much you get paid. Now per diem, I know a lot of people don't understand how per diem works. So per diem is what you get paid on your layovers and also when you're on standby, OPR, ready reserve, depending on whatever your airline calls it, but pretty much when you're just sitting at the airport and you're waiting for them to give you an assignment. So it's um, separated for mainline by domestic and international. So domestic, our per diem is 220 and international it's 250. And I do not mean $220, yes, I mean $2.20 for every hour you are away from base domestically and internationally, internationally, wow. It's $2.50 for every hour you're away from base. So don't be like, wow, like how do people survive? Don't be fooled like that adds up when you're having two, three, four day trips the whole month. It's like, it adds up. So it definitely helps when you're not just doing one days all the time. Like when you actually have a layover and when you're away from base, that adds up. So keep that in mind. So I'm not gonna go over irregular operations or anything because it gets really complicated explaining the pay. But when you guys get on the line, if you ever have any questions, I'll be more than willing to break down your pay stuff for you. But as far as what you absolutely need to know, it's that how much you get paid per flight hour, your per diem, and also other things that you get paid for. So you get paid for deadheads. And pretty much when you're on a flight and you're not working the flight, but the company is transporting you either back to base or to another station where they need you to operate the flight from there or to there. So you get paid by the flight hour for that. So if your company needs you to go to LA, deadhead to LA and work the flight back, you get paid the same amount that you would get paid if you worked it. So how much you're getting paid when you work it coming back is how much you're getting paid going to LA and you're just sitting there like a regular passenger in a regular seat. Deadheads, whenever you see a deadhead, it's like, how'd you know? I want it, I needed that. It's the best thing, especially when it's just such a long trip and you just need a break. Like sometimes layovers are not a long enough break. Our minimum required rest is only like 10 hours. So if you're only sleeping, like it takes you a while to settle in, you gotta call your husband, your wife, your kids, whomever, you finally get to bed, you probably have seven, six hours to sleep, and then right back at it with the two, three, even four leg day. So deadheads are amazing because it's just, you're free of working, but you're getting paid as if you're working the flight. So yes, another thing you guys need to know about is mm, lead pay. When you're the lead flight attendant, you get paid um, for mainline again. So depending on the route you go, you get paid an extra one to two seventy-five. So one dollar to two dollars and seventy-five cents for being the lead flight attendant. Um, one thing I'm interested in that I feel like everybody should be interested in, it's a really cool program in my opinion, is the purser program. And when you guys go into training, you'll learn more about it, but it's pretty much a step above being the lead flight attendant, but you're in the lead position, you just have an extra title, you're the purser. So definitely check that out. It is like awarded based on seniority, so you know your girl got a long ways to go. Um, but yeah, like you guys, you're going to get paid. So how it works is every, I haven't met a flight attendant yet that does not get paid bi-monthly. So it's usually either the first of the month and the 15th or the 15th and the 30th of the month. We're on the pay scale of 
the pay frequency, my apologies, of the 15th and the 30th. So on the 15th, that will include all of your overtime that you picked up on your days off, your per diem, any um, bonuses, crew cash, you guys learned about that when you sign up people for our credit cards and you get commission based off of approved applications, it'll be included in that check. It can sometimes be in your 30th check, depending on if there's bonuses and everything going on. But the 15th is like the check. It's like, that's a check where it matters, especially being on reserve because your paychecks are gonna always look the same. You get paid a flat 75 hours every month. So it's like if you don't work above that or if you don't work through your guarantee and then exceed over it, your paychecks are never gonna fluctuate. And that's a bad thing. You should definitely work as much as you can because when you see your first check, like yeah, we get paid 30, 35 an hour, woo hoo. But you guys, once taxes come out, once like all your benefits come out, you know, you wanna have a 401k, you wanna make smart decisions now. Make sure you have medical because you will get sick. Listen, you will get sick. Make sure you have insurance. It's like you really are left with like nothing and it sucks that that's how it is in the beginning, but that's why I'm making this video because I want you guys to understand that. It's like this in the beginning, it's not like this forever. It breaks my heart how many people have come on the line and they leave because after the first few months, they're like, I can't live off of this anymore. But it's because real ex realistic expectations weren't set in the beginning and you also weren't prepared because sometimes people aren't educated with like how this is. And I'll admit, I was one of them. You guys, I thought I was about to come be a flight attendant, travel all the time, have this money rolling in, have the flexibility. I thought I had life made. And boy, I was wrong. I was so wrong. So, so, so wrong. But I stuck it out and I will stick it out. It's still like a rough time for me now but I'm making smarter decisions. I don't travel all the time. I make sure I budget and that's so huge. So you guys definitely want to work over the guarantee because even if, so how I do it is, I make sure that I work really, it's called aggressive. You can bid aggressive when you're on reserve for trips. So I work aggressively all month pretty much and I do that one on one off where it's like one month I'll work a lot and then the next month I'll give my body a break because you need that break you can't constantly work 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 because when you get sick it'll hit you really hard and you'll pay for it like all your past work won't even matter but yeah I give myself that break um but I bid aggressively so that when crew scheduling sees that I bid aggressive for like a four day a three day two day whatever I'm going to be one of the first ones they call depending on how many people bid aggressive we have our own call out list versus like a regular call out list so I bid aggressive and I usually go over guarantee when there's a lot of trips but January has been a slow month so I'm completely dependent upon overtime and it's helped me because as soon as our board opened, it's called um, ETB for us, I go straight and I pick up trips. And it's like I worry later about how much time or if it's like enough time because you can trade with other people and things like that. So I make sure that I pick up whatever I can pick up following legalities and all that things because it won't let you pick up anyway if it doesn't follow your contract. And I'm like, that's it, like I'm good. It's like sometimes they'll suck because I know you guys have seen my Instagram story where I've been like, I'm never picking up a one day again. Like never, never, ever, ever. But I know I am, but it's just sometimes it, <laughs> it really kills you. But if I didn't pick up any overtime, then it'd be like just that 75. Because at this point, we're already halfway through the month and I've only worked 41 hours. I'm still gonna get paid my 75, even though I only worked 41, but it's not, my paycheck's gonna be the same. The only thing that's gonna be different is per diem, but that will be on the 15th check. So that's why it's important, work overtime. Seriously, work overtime. It makes the hugest difference. I 
from working 30 plus hours every other month, I'm giving myself an extra 12 to $1,400, including like the per diem and everything. And you can't argue with that, like you can't beat that on top of like what we already get paid. So I definitely recommend that. Pick up whenever you can, when it's convenient to you, just don't run yourself in the ground. Definitely take care of yourself. But um, I'm trying to think about what else there is because how we get paid, it's, it's a little confusing in the beginning and I'll share a story with you guys, a really quick one because this video is already long. <laughs> um, when we first got paid for mainline, it was a full check, but we didn't work a full month. So what you have to understand is when you're on reserve, the very first paycheck that you get with the company is considered an advance. And from there, it's always going to be like that because you technically owe the company hours. So uh, the first check was a full check. Like we've always like been on the line for that whole month. So we got that check on April 30th. By May 15th, all that per diem, all that stuff, everything that got paid to me was taken back out. So that's why I tell you guys, it's really important that you work overtime because I don't feel like it's a true picture that we get 75 guaranteed hours because on our check that includes the per diem and all the bonuses and everything, they take back half of your guarantee because when they advanced it to you on the 30th, it, it wasn't really your money. It's just like, okay, we have faith that we're at least gonna work you this many hours. Then the 15th comes and it's like, okay, we'll take it back and you can have the difference in your flight hours. So just like imagine if <laughs> you really didn't work. Y'all listen, they can never, it can never be negative. So I don't want you guys to be like afraid, like, oh my God, I'm never gonna make no money. Like ever, no, it's not the case. But it can definitely hurt you if you're giving away your trips that you get on reserve that decreases your guarantee. So if I get an assignment from crew scheduling and I'm like, oh, I really don't want to work today and I post it on the trade board, somebody else picks it up, that those amount of hours get subtracted from my guarantee. So you can fall below your guarantee as well. When you call out sick, it also subtracts from your guarantee and replaces it with sick time. So. I understand right now all of this can be really confusing, but when you see your pay stub, rewatch this video and like things will click. And if it doesn't, I'm sorry. I'm still new to this too, so I'm still learning, but definitely message me and we'll figure it out together. <laughs> but I definitely want to make that video, like wanted to make this video because it's so important that you guys know. I don't want you guys to like get that first paycheck, go ahead and spend like crazy because when the 15th comes, that comes back out and then it kind of balances out after that. So after that, I would, I didn't have any problems. I don't have any problems now, but that's because I'm not afraid to work. I didn't get this job just for the travel benefits. I truly do love my job. And I like flying, like I like flying for work honestly more than I like flying leisurely because when I fly leisurely, I think about everything I could be doing because I, I just, I'm antsy. I'm like, okay, like I think I need to do another service. Like sis, you're not working, just relax, relax. And that's just, that's, that's me. Not everybody's like that. You're probably not like that. You're like, this girl's crazy because I'm going to be Amsterdam, Munich, London, all of that. See, that's just not me. But I do love to travel. Don't get me wrong. But I'm just at a place in my life where I feel like I'm finally maturing and I'm prioritizing things. It's not so important to me to always be traveling, always spending money. I feel like it's just more so of a balance. Like I need my bank account to be in a certain place before I just go and start spending money and things like that. Like I said, this is just me again. I'm not taking shots at anyone, but I just can't see myself having roommates and everything for the rest of my life. Like I wanna have my own place. I want to like settle down, buy a house even. Like I want to start 
doing grown up things, I guess you can say. So that's just me. If you guys have any questions, I feel like this video was all over the place. I hope you really stayed with me because your girl is like a squirrel. Like, oh, oh my God. No, it's a dog. It's a dog, yeah, I'm like a dog. And then the dog's like, squirrel. Like, <laughs> see, like, I can't even get it right. <laughs> but yeah, definitely message me, leave comments below. What I can answer, I will. Um, what I won't do is give you our whole pay table. I told you what you get paid the first year and what you max out at. If you're gonna be on the line, you get that with your contract. And if you're in the process of being on the line, you will get that. Just hold on, you're almost there. You can wait. Surprise, you gotta like surprises. You don't. <laughs> but anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate y'all, I love y'all. And I'm so happy that we're continuing to grow, but, 2019, what's in store?